So yes, uh, and full disclosure, I am part of the Spec High Performance Group. I was the chair of the group for four years, so uh, I really like the benchmarks that I'm presenting. Um, so the, the idea is to give you a brief overview of the organization of Spec. Who in the room is familiar with Spec? Okay, that's a decent subset. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll spend a little less time on that and spend a little bit more time on the, the latest uh, benchmark suite from the High Performance Group which is the, the SPEC HPC uh, 2021 benchmark, and then talk a little bit about the first results as well. If you, I, I'll try to come in significantly under 30 minutes. So if you, have, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me right at the, at the slide. So uh, SPEC is a nonprofit organization formed in 1988. The idea is to really promote standard benchmarks in a number of different fields. Uh, there are four groups within SPEC. One is the open systems group, which most people know from the spec CPU uh, benchmark that is used a lot in industry uh, with the popular spec int and spec rate uh, and spec FP uh, measurements. Then there is the graphics at workstation group. They develop benchmarks for 3D applications and, uh, and, and uh, graphical intensive applications. There's a research group, uh, which focuses on be benchmarking research. And then there's the high performance group which is the benchmark that I'm presenting here uh, is developed in that group. The high performance group is a pretty good mix uh, from academic uh, participants from uh, basically the US, uh, Europe and Asia and uh, a number of uh, vendors that are active in the high performance uh, space. For example, the, the, the CPU vendors, Intel, uh, AMD, NVIDIA for the GPUs, and then the server vendors, Lenovo, HPE. Um, and then the, the idea is really to work jointly on developing the benchmarks and focus on not uh, vendor-specific primitives or vendor-specific languages. So for example, the High Performance Group has never shipped the CUDA benchmark because that is a programming model only supported by one vendor. Um, and even that vendor is in favor of not shipping a CUDA specific benchmark, but really focus on things that have support in at least two compilers. So the uh, uh, the one that is where this becomes a little close is OpenACC, uh, which is a standard uh, and is supported now by up to four compilers, depending on how well you count the support. Um, but the idea is always to ship something that is supported by at least two compilers or at least two execution platforms. This is a little bit of the history. Uh, the, the first benchmark that was actually released by the high performance group was uh, also called spec HPC, which was released in the late nineties and was an application benchmark. Uh, then the, the first uh, widely available benchmark was spec OpenMP 2001, which was released, I think a year after the first OpenMP uh, specification was shipped with the explicit aim to really help compiler developers uh, create OpenMP 1.0 compliant compilers. And then from there on, there is an MPI benchmark suite, which is a little bit long in the tooth now with being released in 2007. Then OpenMP in 12, uh, there was a spec Excel that was has seen multiple versions with multiple data sets. This was actually the first uh, benchmark that was really available where you had the same applications implemented in OpenACC uh, and OpenMP4 target offloading. So you could actually directly compare, you could not directly compare, you could somewhat directly compare uh, the implementation in those uh, two uh, uh, parallel paradigms. And then the latest one, spec HPC 2021, which sort of takes the accelerator version and the MPI version and merges them. So the, the spec HPC benchmark is the first hybrid one where you have MPI to deal with uh, distribution across the nodes, and then have an accelerator, uh, ha have, a, have an, uh, a, a paradigm that can take advantage of either multiple cores or multiple GPUs within a node. The uh, one thing that becomes apparent very quickly if you deal with accelerators is they are rather fast. Uh, they also get faster a lot faster than CPUs get faster. That's a lot of fast in the same sentence. Um, meaning if you ship a strong scaling benchmark where you start with a, a 
a static workload, if you ship this and two years later, your runtime goes down to single seconds per benchmark, you're probably not measuring what you want to measure. So the, uh, which is something that in the, in the spec Excel use case is really problematic now with some of the, the smaller workloads. The, to mitigate this to some extent and still maintain a strong scaling benchmark, which is what this, the, the, the suite is, is there are four workloads in the benchmark, tiny, small, medium, and large. Tiny uh, is supposed to scale to about, I think, 192 uh, MPI processes, MPI ranks. Um, small scales to uh, 1,000 MPI ranks, medium scales to like two, two and a half thousand, and large scales to something like 8,000 MPI ranks. So decently large, not leadership class, right? Uh, I'm going to show a result from Summit later on, and you will see that, no, you cannot benchmark all of Summit with it. Scalability will suck. But um, depending on the mix of uh, CPU, uh, depending on how many CPUs you have or how many GPUs you have, uh, this benchmark suite covers a large number of clusters available on the market and installed. It's nine full or proxy applications uh, with C, C++, and Fortran being uh, the develop being the, the, the languages. We have looked at some higher level paradigms like Alpaca or um, uh, Cocos, but in the end had trouble integrating those uh, and, and really make them run in the harness. So there's, there's an ongoing uh, effort to really also look at, I don't know if you call them fourth generation languages, but, but higher level abstractions over C, C++ to really help developers write, write code faster. The, it supports MPI and, and only MPI to go between nodes. Uh, you can use any MPI library you want, uh, but it has to be MPI. And then the, the four um, hybrid models are OpenACC, uh, OpenMP with uh, target offload, so the OpenMP5 specification, and then legacy or classical OpenMP, which is just normal threading the way OpenMP used to be. So you can run the benchmark suites in, in basically in four different ways. One is MPI only, and the other one is then MPI plus. OpenACC, OpenMP target, or OpenMP thread. We had quite a strong desire to keep a benchmark suite or to, to keep a way of how you can run it and evaluate CPU-only systems, right? Specifically, vendors in the, in the group had a strong uh, preference because they sell a lot of CPU-only systems still. So uh, having a benchmark that requires an accelerator was not was not something that people were in favor of. The focus is on portable general performance, um, meaning we would like to evaluate the mostly the performance of the compiler, not the performance of the compiler uh, of the application engineers that can tune the algorithms of the application. To facilitate some performance tuning. The, um, there are, you have the ability to change the directives in a peak run. So spec supports a base and a peak run. Base run is your normal pick a compiler, pick a level of optimization flex and run it. It's sort of what you get if you take an application, compile it and, and, and run it on a cluster. And peak allows you to be much more fine granular with compiler flex um, and optimizations. So um, in order, there are some interesting implementations specifically with OpenMP5 depending on running it on a GPU versus a CPU or uh, other implementations where just the way the, the, the OpenMP5 specification allows you to distribute the work becomes very different based on your target architecture. So having the ability to specify to, to specify some parameters in the, in the directives is helpful for, for getting peak performance. We have yet to see a vendor actually submit a result with this. So this is one of those uh, cases where you spend half a year coming up with the run rules and the possible exceptions. And then in the end, nobody ever submits something that, that changes the source code. But what, what you see is that um, 
mod you see compiler evolution. So running the benchmark with newer compilers, specifically with OpenMP5, really gets better results. The uh, the way benchmarks uh, were selected, let me actually show those. So those are the nine nine applications that are uh, in the suite. They were selected and they are always selected in the high performance group with basically a community call out. Um, it may not be the most well distributed uh, call for applications uh, in the community, but we normally go out, we do a press release, we have a Buffett supercomputing um, and we, we talk about this as often as we can, where anybody can select uh, an application and submit it to spec to be included in the in the in the next benchmark. There are a number of criteria that lead to those specific codes, for example, portability, right? For example, getting rid of very platform specific codes. Um, it's I mean, I personally it's, I find it's amazing when you get an application that actually has x86 assembly in there to make things fast. It's unfortunately not so great for a spec benchmarks because you want to be able to run it on power, you want to run it on ARM, right? So we we then strip those out and fall back to the, the high level language implementation. But there are some codes who really use this a lot and, and get a, a lot slower if you don't do this. So uh, not every application that gets submitted by the community makes it into the suite. Seems, seems very physics heavy, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, yes, it is. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say this is the most diverse set of applications ever. Um, and to some extent, it's represented to whom, who is on the committee and who works on it. And the other side, it's represented by what gets submitted. So we have, so we, for example, we had both Wharf submitted as a, as a weather application and the new NCAR code, um, um, CSM. Um, and actually, the the Japanese code as well. Um, we, yes, I can. Um, none of those three made it through the rounds because of portability concerns, yeah. code maintainability concerns. So it's it's a it's really unfortunately it's a, being a mature benchmark suite has a lot of constraints which limits sort of peak performance that you would like to measure. In, in return for having something that, that you can measure in, in a lot of systems. So there is, a, this the slide is a little older. We launched the suite in at supercomputing in 2021. So there's now about a year and a half worth of worth of data uh, in it. Um, so the, the, the number is no longer 10, it's actually much higher. We get decent uh, submissions lately. This is um, one thing that the high performance group benefits from is all the infrastructure that goes into the spec CPU suite. So we will use the same framework. We will use the same way to render beautiful web 1.0 tables um, that uh, cannot be sorted. But basically all the results for spec are publicly available. And one thing that is uh, very important about the spec results really is the, the, the number of details that you find in, in the results. So the ideal goal of a, a spec run is that if you have the same hardware, you can get the same software and you should get the same number. And most of the time that works. I have successfully reproduced some of the numbers uh, that for example, Oak Ridge has published on, on uh, their Cray system, uh, the IU Cray system. And yes, you get within very, tiny margins, you get the same number. Um, this has some implications on how long it takes for specifically people who are new to spec to run the benchmark, write the documentation, and then submit it, um, which I, I personally get a lot of value out of the result repository and the documentation that is in there. So yes, it limits who submits results, but my, my favorite... Uh, example of, of how bad it is if you don't have all this information. It's just the top 500, right? Look at any top 500 run. With any luck, you know what compiler was used and maybe what the MPI library was, but good luck looking at anything else, right? Like how was how was how, how were the MPI tasks distributed on the machine or how many of the nodes were actually part of the benchmark as opposed to how big the machine is. So all of this 
is not is something that you would easily see here. I mean, you would you would know whether hyperthreading was turned on, what the what uh, or if, for example, CPU throttling was disabled. All of that is in the detailed results, which I will not go through. Um, some of the characteristics. Yeah. So going you know, at the roots of this idea itself. So I have two questions. So one is uh, because you're going to resolve, so I thought I'm going to have Of two. course, yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so one is um, like for top 500, they use, uh, you know, blend pack, right? Which is extremely, extremely silly, I think. Uh, I mean, what are your thoughts on, you know, them using you know, a wider range of benchmarks? Uh, you know, like this, for example, uh, you know, or something else. I mean, why don't they do that? Uh, number one, because I mean, using Link Pack, I know one can just, you know, come up with, you know, an arbitrary machine that is just suited for Link Pack. Yeah. Uh, and there are, are examples. Uh, that's one. So let's start with that. And then I'm so uh, to summarize the question, the audience was why use Linpack for the top 500 submission? Sorry to make this short. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I I absolutely agree. And uh, when I was like 10, 15 years younger, I was actually like, those people are just idiots, yeah. right? Um, because why would you? In hindsight, I think having a list that is now, what, 25 years old, 30, 30 something, right? Um, and compares at least one aspect of a, pro of a machine, not just the processor, two yeah, aspects. Yeah. And the network, yeah, okay, um, is very useful. Um, the other thing that is that shouldn't be under that should not be underestimated is just the PR value of the top five hundred list, right? For us, the ability to snap a photo with our university president next to the machine and say this is rank forty six on the list, priceless. Yeah. Doesn't it does not give you good benchmarks? I'm not arguing there, right? I think there are there are non benchmark related reasons why the top 500 does what it does that would be my answer the thing is you know it's actually the system is priceless in the sense that you know it's making government spend like you know millions and billions and maybe you know, often times you know not do as useful um but anyhow uh so the other part is so there's the you know hpc in the cloud you know which is a new and emerging topic uh, there. And the reason actually that I know about CSM is very recently because you know we're looking at HPC in the cloud, you know, coming from HPE myself. Um, I mean, thanks to HPE being a member, it's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I learned it just now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, what if I don't think that uh, so they're uh, the actually we are we want there to be a you know a set of benchmarks which uh, you know, different. Uh, so, for example, in HPC in the cloud, so there is like a lot of small companies that allow you to, you know, just take a open form, for example, you know, they would have a web browser, you know, you can say, okay, open form, run with this data set, and they would, you know, under the hood, run it on, you know, AWS or whatever, but you get the results out of, you know, that small company or whatever, but there's no way to compare, you know, different vendors out there, mm -hmm. you know, which one is better, which one is not kind of a thing. And I think, you know, going forward, that is going to be important. Uh, but there, I don't see that these benchmarks, you know, kind of represent HPC in the cloud as well. So we will actually have, we have been working with, with Simon McIntyre Smith specifically on the ARM results because he has run spec in AWS uh, on fairly large clusters there as well. Um, and he's the current poster child for how hard it is to come up with the documentation uh, in order to submit it. So we have the results, we just don't have them published yet. Um, I, I I may argue with you on the, those are not, what was your wording? Those are not H, not representative of HPC in the cloud? Yeah, yeah, in the sense that, like, uh, I mean. Um, and maybe we have that discussion at the end. So huh? maybe we have that discussion at the end. Okay, just sure. so, um, because I, I, I want to hear more about the why yeah. on that, yeah. but I, I promise to come in in th under 30 minutes. I need to stick to this, right? So just a little bit of the character. <laughs> so better on the, uh, talk a little bit about the characteristics. I have a few slides that are specific to the MPI only version of the benchmark suite. So this is sort of the, 
the worst case in MPI overhead that you will see because for some of the others, you can significantly return, uh, reduce the MPI overhead by having more compute in, a, in every MPI process if you offload to the GPU than this. So take those with a grain of salt. Um, those are all done at the tech system by uh, Junji Lee, who is one of their staff scientists there. Um, and this gives you an idea of just how how much we still rely on MPI as being the, the, the workload distribution engine. Um, the, the general goal for spec is to actually have MPI under 20%. So uh, I guess we failed in Minisweep in that particular case, but the idea is uh, to not be an MPI only benchmark for this, for this suite. Then code characteristics, um, which I actually hadn't seen uh, uh, for a long time, but the codes are not actually that FP64 heavy that we have which is interesting. Now they are very well vectorized. So the codes that are in there are, um, are the vectorization is decent, but um, I would have expected just from my gut feeling uh, for some of those codes to be a lot more FP64 heavy than, than they are floating point heavy to begin with um, than they actually are. So I guess at least we can say we're not, we're not just catering to the people who want more floating point units uh, on a CPU. But isn't um, typically non-floating point just integer address? Uh, yeah, it's memory loads, into, uh, branch predictions, and, and integer. Then uh, looking at the roofline model there, the rectangle in the middle is just the, the lower right-hand corner there. So a lot, as others have already uh, pointed out, right, memory bandwidth is the limiting factor. It's not... Uh, uh, Floating point performance. Scalability, just to basically say, yes, we have cases where there is super linear speed up because if you take a strong scaling benchmark and you distribute it across enough CPU cores, you get enough cache lines and all of a sudden things will fit in cache that don't fit in cache if you're doing it uh, on just a single node. GPUs as well. Um, Again, full disclosure, being having been part of the OpenACC uh, group, I get a kick out of saying that, yes, the ACC version of the algorithm will perform faster than the OpenMP5 one. And then large clusters, this is the slide that uh, is just like, yes, if you run a benchmark suite with uh, 8,400 MPI ranks and the V100, and the benchmark seed hasn't been designed to scale this far, it will not scale this far. So the uh, this is the summit result where um, it's just, the benchmark suite has been designed to go to something like 8,000 CPU only ranks. So you get significantly less if you add GPUs to the mix. This is just a nice summary saying there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of configuration that you can do with it to make it, run on the specific system you want to be evaluating. You have four workloads, tiny, small, medium, large. You have four ways to run the thing parallel, MPI only, or MPI plus, OpenMP, target offload, OpenACC. And then you can actually look at the individual application. So if you know from a, from an, from a uh, communication paradigm that you care about point to point or you care about all reduces, then going back to the table and also the documentation that we have with the suite you can look at that specific performance. There's a lot, this is the last, it's almost the last slide. See, 30 minutes, easy. Um, what has it been used for? Um, we, we are actually quite happy that we have people from uh, various compiler teams in the high performance group. So we have LLVM, we have the Intel compiler, we have some of the uh, people who work on the, on the AMD HIP version and, and other compilers and, and AOCC to really help with running the codes, making sure that the compilers are compliant um, or either changing our code or the compilers to compile the suite. We have a, one of the ECP uh, projects relying on those uh, for validation of open uh, MP uh, compilers. Just uh, at IU, we run it as just a, a cluster validation suite after maintenance day uh, because there's always things that will go wrong during maintenance. 
and then just um, as Jose is here, right? He has he's one of the uh, people that has grown up with spec and now has a great job in industry uh, and, and at Argon. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, there is uh, there's also the workforce development aspect. It is. Uh, let me just say one sentence here. Spec the high performance group benchmarks are free of charge to non commercial entities. So anybody can get them. All you need to do is fill out a web form. And that's it. If you want to join, we always can have more people on the committee. Uh, we are currently working on a weak scaling benchmark um, to specifically the address, address the issue of strong scalability and, and uh, I guess GPU vendors refreshing their GPUs too quickly for us to keep up with coming up with larger uh, problem sizes. That's it. We Thank you so much. Codes. Scaling to 160,000. from Spain to publish papers and things like that. So, can you comment a little bit of what are the actual not limitations, but what are the actual guidelines for using the results on publications that are not commercial like scientific publications so the uh the cleanest way to think of it is um if you if you submit a result to spec for review and it gets published then you can do whatever whatever you want if you don't do this you have two options you can mark it as a spec estimate in which case you can do anything you want with it. Um, the other option is you can self-publish under the assumption that you are hitting all the rules of spec, and then you can call it a spec score. But you need to publish it in the same way, and people can ask for everything that is normally on the spec website. But those are the two things. So if you... If you one more. I think you can publish, but not the spec score, but like if you extract stuff from you can publish three, a run then you can yes like, okay this ran in like five seconds okay. yeah yeah if you do not specifically cite the spec score but you get on you go on runtime which is something that spec will also publish um you can do that as well Put modification. if you market an estimate you can thank you